Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today we're gonna do something really, really interesting. Also, please don't judge, it is a Wednesday as I record this and I have not cleaned my Craft Castle. Look at, there's my little puppy dog. But yikes, this Craft Castle is really dirty. Oh my goodness. Okay, so in my Craft Castle, I made this ombre rainbow, rainbow wall, shiplap wall, beginning of last year. Um, and I have a ton of leftover paint. Okay, so that has nothing to do with what I'm about ready to show you. But in my craft castle, I have this really long hallway. There is the door, my glow forge, and then there's this like really long hallway that goes into the bathroom of my craft castle. So do you see this right here? This like blank spot that's right here. I've been wanting to like do something, like find a rug. Not really do. I did not want to DIY anything. I wanted to find a really long runner that would match my craft castle in its craziness that it has. Well, I was searching on Pinterest and someone had posted this tutorial about making your own rug. Didn't know I could do that, but I did. And it looks exactly like my rainbow wall and I use leftover paint. I only had to grab a little bit of supplies. The only supply that I really actually had to buy was this right here. It's textile medium. I got it at Joann's, but you can get it online as well. Um, and then it was like a drop cloth and then just like leftover paint. I'm gonna show you how I did all of that and then the finished product here in a second, but I just wanted to show you. Like, look at how crazy big this craft room is. I absolutely love it. I need a maid or I need to like commit to like cleaning this thing. <laughs> on an everyday basis because man is it dirty okay one more shout out to my old man dog right there okay now let's get started on the tutorial on how in the world did I make a rainbow rug for my craft castle okay first thing that you're going to need to buy or if you have it on hand is a drop cloth yeah one of those like painters drop cloths that people use you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's I'm sure you maybe even Walmart has it um, I had this laying around a company a couple years ago wanted me to make them like a really big sign and they ordered me three just in case I messed up I actually never did mess up so I had two just laying around my craft castle so I just pulled one out I folded it in half and then I cut it, it straight down the middle and then I also cut off its um like finished edges that they had because it what it was it was looking weird that only one of my edges wasn't fully finished and this is like a no so DIY project because I mean although I do have a sewing machine I try not to use that as much as possible because I can't stand it okay and I actually already forgot a step <laughs> when you take the drop cloth just take it out and pop it straight into the washing machine quick wash I use detergent um and then I dried it and then I didn't iron it. Clearly you can see a lot of the wrinkles, but anyways. Okay, so then I took some fabric glue. This is the super tight fabric glue that they offer. It's like one of the strongest ones. Apparently Zara Clothing uses it to like glue their clothing together. I don't know, but anyways. So I just like did a squirt line down the like raw edge and then I folded it over. The reason why I did this, I mean, I'm sure you can skip this step if you're not wanting to do this. Um, a, no so great because we're using glue, but two, um, I'm trying to prevent it from fraying because it's going to be in like a high traffic area. I don't want like my footsteps or like my dog or whatever um, making the drop cloth fray over time. You know, you can put it in the wash and it's going to start fraying. So hopefully I stop it from fraying by doing this process. I don't know because, you know, I just made it, but it looks really cute also to give it like a finished edge. Here's a closer look at that edge that I cut off. You can see that like it's a sewed finished edge and I thought it would look weird that three out of the four sides of my rug would have a sewn edge and all the rest of them would just be this like folded over glued down thing. So that's why I cut it all off. And then here is a closer look at just the bead of glue that I'm putting down, just a small bead of glue and then I fold it over. I did not measure any of this. I just eyeballed it and hoped and prayed that <laughs> it ended up looking straight in the end. Okay, so you're totally going to see a new outfit and a new location because while I was doing the first part of this rug, we actually had some drama in the house. You know that like Chinese spy balloon that was floating around the United States? Well, it ended up coming down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, my town that I live in. So we had to go to the beach and try and find a, d any debris. Um, we didn't find any debris, sadly. But anyway, so we had good family fun and then I'm back 
and I'm working on this rug. Okay, so making sure that when you lay down your drop cloth that the folded edge is underneath because that is now your back portion. And then all I'm doing is taking my paint swatches and kind of eyeballing it and making sure that it's evenly spaced. Um, I'm not measuring because I didn't want to get a ruler out or a measuring tape out and just kind of hoping that it all falls into place and looks good in the end. <laughs> and let's go on with the entire like let's not get a ruler also we're not going to get like a scale or a measuring cup or anything like that the stuff that I bought this fabric medium it says one to two ratio so for every bit of paint you do you need to double it with the fabric medium um I don't that's why I don't even like baking because like I don't like to be exact so you just got to shake up the paint shake up the medium um and then I just kind of like eyeballed it totally not exact. I probably don't even suggest you doing that, <laughs> doing it the way that I did. Um, maybe grab a scale. I don't know. The end product ended up looking really cute. So maybe I bought it. I don't even know. But just know on the back of the bottle, it's a one to two ratio. And I did not follow that step at all. That seems to be okay. Did you just hear that? I was even hyping myself up saying like, yeah, it seems like it'll be okay. You know, I have no idea. But anyways, so once you pour it in, it's going to be this like milky color. Just keep stirring. It's not going to change the color of the paint. It's just going to water it down to be like a more watery consistency. Oh, on the back of the bottle, it does say to only use acrylic paint, but I'm using latex here. Um, the samples that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. And it, again, my rug ended up looking really good. So I, I'm assuming you could use any paint that you have. Okay, and for this, I just slapped on the paint. I only use like a small little brush because that's all I had on hand. Uh, probably a bigger one would help make the process go faster. I mean, putting down all the paint took me about two hours because I was using such a small brush, but you just brush it on. And essentially you just keep doing the same process until you run out of rug space to do. Uh, so shake up the paint, shake up the medium, pour it into the little cup that you're using and then just stir and then paint away. Hey love. Huh? Can you come here? I'd go over there, but the paint, I don't want you to open this up over there. I need help. Making a mess? No. I have a drop cloth underneath. And there's nothing getting on the floor. It's just on the drop cloth. <laughs> you had to check. No, I did check. I was showing you. First, can we insert an excuse you for burping? My goodness. But do you hear my husband? He is like trying to make sure that I'm not making a mess. Uh, I forgot to mention before, make sure and just put like a drop cloth down or some type of plastic or something so you don't ruin your floors as you paint. You can do it. Spanks, boo. See, and I even have my bucket. So like when I pour the paint, I just pour it into here. Okay, back to DIYing and less talking about husbands trying to micromanage our craftiness. Uh, pour the paint and then pour the medium and then just keep painting. This process is pretty monotonous and gets boring after a while. Oh yeah, get a bigger paintbrush. Okay, so let's talk about how I like made the ombre effect because I didn't want like harsh lines because we weren't measuring. Um, so what I did was, as you can see with the light orange, is I kind of did my full stripe that I wanted to paint, but I left that like little gap in between like the light orange and the darker orange. I just left a gap. And then I took my paintbrush with like a bunch of paint on it and then also to make the blending go a lot smoother and more blended, you kind of want to work fast because the darker color that's on top, you don't want it to be fully dry when you do this. And then I just like take a bunch of paint and I like smoosh both colors together. And you can kind of see my hand like going back and forth and up and down. It's just because I wanted to evenly blend the color so it goes down very smooth and so you don't have any harsh lines. Okay, so after you paint forever, it feels like, I mean, again, this was like a little over two hours, I think, you get this like really cool painted drop cloth at this point. I mean, it is technically a rug. Okay, so you have to let this dry for 24 hours. I know that seems like really a long time, but do let it dry for 24 hours before you touch it of any sort. 
New location, new outfit. <laughs> um, I let the rug dry for 24 hours and then I laid it out in the hallway back in my craft castle because I wanted to make sure that this is exactly what I was looking for and envisioning before I like continued on with the rest of the process. Okay, so if you have an iron at home, um, just, you know, like one of those like irons that you use to uh, iron your clothes, this will work. But if not, I have a portable heat press that I got from Craft Express. I just plug that in and I heated that up to at temperature. The back of the bottle says to heat seal is it says heat seal uh, your paint into your fabric. I don't that doesn't give me time temperature anything. So I have no idea what was right and what was wrong on this part. I just heated my heat press up to like 375 and then I pressed it on for, I don't know, like five seconds. It kind of made the uh, drop cloth not as stiff because uh, it, it actually isn't that stiff, but like once I did the heat set, it made it a little bit softer and not as stiff. So, I mean, it's working. I just don't know like what was the correct way and time and you know there's like no directions here it's like a full-on diy hope and prayer that this crafter ends up having a finished craft that looks good okay so then i plugged in my hot glue gun and i turned the rug over so one of my friends over on instagram she like commented on like this whole i want to do a rug thing and she was like you better put something on the bottom of that because you were going to slip and fall so here i am with my hot glue gun and i'm just like putting what would act like as a rug gripper and I just put like thick pieces of hot glue on everything and just let it dry and cure. Uh, hopefully this portion works. And not to give you all a heart attack, but I definitely did turn this around and I <laughs> tried my hardest to like make it move, like slip and fall. Uh, it's not perfect. You probably wanna just buy a rug gripper, but I'm really trying not to spend a whole lot of money here and um, so anyways, I just used the uh, hot glue gun. Now, obviously I do know that I can't just go running into my craft castle, otherwise I probably will slip, but you know, the hot glue did work just a little bit, but it wasn't like perfect, perfect. And here is my finished rug. I am absolutely in love with it. This rug might not be for you, but at the end of the day, I sure hope I just inspired you to make and craft. And you know, it's always something cool when I can say like, yeah, I made that. And I sure hope you get that feeling too, because I'm telling you, it just brings me so much joy that I can make things and people go, whoa, you made that? I'm like, yes. All right, y'all. I sure hope I inspired you to craft and I will see you later.